I'm here to talk to you guys today a little bit about distinguishing today versus tomorrow. At the age of 15 years old, I had decided that uh, school just wasn't cool anymore and it just wasn't going to happen. Uh, there was no college for me. There was no more high school. I was done. That was it. I had made up my mind of what I was going to do the rest of my life. Now, my mother with her PhD in education and my father a Methodist minister, you could only imagine the sermon I got when I made this decision. My saving grace was that I did have a plan. At 15 years old, I knew what I wanted to do the rest of my life. 21 years later, I can tell you it's still the same plan. At 15, I said to myself, you know what? There's a lifelong career of food service ahead of me. It's not going to go anywhere. It's what I want to do. Now, I can tell you the next 21 years were not easy for me by any means. Having cooks next to me on the line that were twice my age, been cooking twice as old as, as long as I am old. I mean, these guys have been around for 40, 50 years doing this thing. So I had to fight and I fought. Um, so, you know, through all the hazing and all of that, I just kept that vision of, you know, today's a struggle. Today's definitely a struggle. Tomorrow, these guys aren't going to mess with me like they did today. I left there seven years later as the general manager, all of them working for me. Now, the next 10 years, I spent truly trying to better myself. And through that, I did have some selfish acts in there of just trying to make myself a better known chef. I'm not here to say that self-development is not important, but where it really became real for me was when I quit worrying about what I was doing for myself and what I was going to do to better the industry in the long term. That being said, 2013 came along just this past year. My career, I feel, hit its all-time peak. At the beginning of the year, I opened restaurant IPO downtown. Within six months, it was nominated top 100 hottest restaurants in the nation, followed me by me being asked to come and cater the premiere party at Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. Shortly after I returned, I was nominated Chefs to Watch by Louisiana Cooking Magazine on a national level. I finished the year being cast to Top Chef season 11. It was a big year, for sure, but there was something missing. I'm originally from Lafayette, a lot of passion there for food and culture, but Baton Rouge was home. My wife and I had made it home. We wanted to stay here. The one thing that really just drove me was that there was a lot of food here, a lot of good chefs here. There was a lot of passion here. But when I'd ask somebody where I should eat that night, they would name the restaurant, and they would name how long it had been there. And that bugged me, and I'll tell you why. When I go to New Orleans and ask somebody, hey, where should I go eat? They're going to say, you should go to this restaurant. This person is the chef. This person is the owner. I've known them for 10 years. This is what they're doing for the community. This is the food they specialize in. It's all about who's making it there, who's making it happen. They're not worried about the name today. They're worried about who that chef's going to be and make this industry a little bit better down the road. I made it my goal at that time to make Baton Rouge a better place for all of these people in this industry. Not necessarily just a better place to eat, but a better place for the people to work in. So now you're asking yourself, okay, well, what does that have to do with the price of eggs in China, right? Here you are. Yeah, I mean, everyone has to have a mentor. Uh, you don't get through life without having someone to guide you, to coach you, to help introduce things to you and help you get through life. But whether it's a, a family member like a mom or a dad or, or a grandparent, uh, or just somebody uh, professionally who you've looked up to and who you try to model your career after. One of the things that I've noticed over the last 20 years of being a professional chef in this industry is that, you know, there are kids out there, they want to get in this industry, they want to try it out, they want to be a chef, they want to be a cook, but nobody's been able to reach out to them and say, okay, look, I'm going to give you that basic skill set. My wife and I have kind of sat back and, and we looked at our own kids and we've looked at the community and said, you know, what can we do to make a difference in this business? When Chef came to me, I, I very much understood his vision for Triumph Kitchen, which is basically a place for high school 
college age kids to come and learn the simple abilities of getting a job in the workplace, being on time, learning the skills in a kitchen. Hands-on training in the culinary arts from established chefs that have been doing this for 20 plus years. This is a no-nonsense program. Going through this application process and actually getting the ball rolling is one step. From there, they start a 12-week program with us where they're learning the front of the house, they're learning the back of the house. How to greet a guest, how to answer the phone correctly. That being able to chop veggies, holding a knife correctly, working sanitary. Working the line at a restaurant, creating menu items. Taking orders, being able to handle money. They're doing life skills every afternoon. Simple things that make a difference like job interviewing, filling out an application, how to write a budget for your own house, how do you balance your checkbook. How do you make sure you have the appropriate groceries in your own pantry for your own family? At the end of it, we take these successful students and put them into a two-week job placement program. And that's where I really lean on some of these chefs that I've built great relationships with. And I say, look, I have a student. He just finished 12 weeks with me. He's gonna give you everything he's got. He's trustworthy, he's honest, and he needs more mentorship. Visit Baton Rouge is definitely supportive of Triumph Kitchen. We hope the rest of the community gets involved as well. All great destinations have great product delivery as well, and so having trained individuals on location in the restaurants and in the hotels in Baton Rouge will only enhance the product that we deliver to our visitors. You know, financially, uh, there's a lot involved in this school. That You know, this organization is full nonprofit. And in order to do it, I've got to make sure that we have power in this kitchen. I've got to make sure we have plumbing. We're talking full-on commercial kitchens. We're talking classroom setups. Actually open to the public cafe area. The, the scope of Triumph Kitchen is incredible. And the cost just to get this thing from where it was as a shell to being opened is astronomical. And what we're doing here is just asking for a little bit of community support. I think Triumph Kitchen is critical for Baton Rouge as a whole. It will enable them to learn things that are so important from life coaching to handling money to dealing with customers to learning the trade and the craft of something as important as cooking is to everyone in this country and especially here in Baton Rouge and here in Louisiana. So uh, Triumph Kitchen just bridges the gap um, from society to life to living to working. And there it is, the, the birth. Thank you. The birth of Triumph Kitchen. It was no longer about me, and it still is no longer about me. It was pretty gutsy for me after 2013 and the things I had going on to be able to just throw it away and take this project on. I look back at it, and still today look at it, and there's no throwing away. There's no throwing away at all. I can remember being a chef uh, actively in this, re in this industry and being a restaurant owner and struggling to find good help, struggling to find someone who is truthful, respectful, united with my team, had the integrity, was motivated to do more, persevering all the way to the end, honesty. Those are the core values of Triumph Kitchen. Those are the things that I was missing with every single applicant that ever came into one of my restaurants. My wife, Summer, who you guys got to see on that video, my rock, 10 years of special needs teaching in Louisiana, three education degrees, me of 20 years in this industry, have created Triumph Kitchen, a nonprofit education venue based around inner city and at-risk teens that nobody wanted to turn an eye or a hand, helping hand to. They now are rising to the top. I have eight students that started with me three and a half weeks ago and walk around with their chin up and they leave their Triumph shirt on even when they're not at school because they're so dang proud to have it on. Just recently, Summer and I brought them up to the top of the state capitol. From the top of the state capitol, we could look as far as the eye could see. From up there, there's no poverty, there's no crime. It's just endless opportunity as far as you can see. While we were up there, we wrote down a few things, a few major things that possibly had held us back from our dreams and held us back from where we wanted to be tomorrow. We collected those things, we left them at the top of the Capitol. We walked back down with our eight students and stepped down onto downtown streets and said, 
here we are, guys. It's the beginning of a brand new age for you. It's going to happen. I leave you guys with today. What is it that you're going to do tomorrow to better this community? Thank you.